tonight. And uh, anybody remember what we talked about last week? All right. Are you see my how to get over well your past hurts? Huh? How to get past your past hurts? Yes, moving beyond your um, moving beyond the pain of the past. How to get beyond your past hurts? Because uh, many people are living in the past, although they're living <laughs> today, because we have not dealt with our past hurts. And these are serious. We want to have full life. Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And for those who are on, we draw our, our information from a number of sources, from the Bible, from inspiration, from good science, and from our own personal experience living as human beings. Now, we have a subject um, this evening. It's difficult, but it's the only way you can experience healing of body, mind, and spirit. It's difficult, but it's the only way you can experience healing of body, mind, and spirit. Just think about that, and you're going to see that come out. Now, uh, in Luke chapter 17, Jesus asked his disciples a question. Um, why did Jesus' disciples ask him to increase their faith? Uh, the answer may surprise you. It may surprise you, it surprised me when I first discovered that book because most of the time uh, we do not ask God for faith to do what the disciples ask him for faith to do. All right, so let's see why uh, they ask him to increase their faith. And everywhere I go, people say, do you need to have more faith? People would say yes. And in this area that we're gonna talk about, this difficult area, you're gonna need faith. All right, could somebody read here for us? We didn't pray yet. Dr. Ephraim, could you pray for us for God's guidance? Very most kind and merciful Father, we thank you for your holy Sabbath day. Lord, as we go through your words and as we study there, Father, we pray that our lives may be enlightened and transformed and that we may be drawn closer to you. Continue to be with us, continue to bless us. And Father, everything that we present here is for your name's honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Luke 17, one, could you read that, Jennifer? Okay. Why did Jesus' disciples ask him to increase their faith? The answer may surprise you. Then Jesus said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Look, right, look, for, us, verse look one. folks, offenses will come, trouble will come. Let's continue from verse three now, Jennifer. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven mm -hmm. times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on there. So um, uh, you, you think that was a really um, easy thing to do if somebody sins against you seven times in a day, I repent, you must forgive him. What would we say if somebody is doing that to us, Carlton? Uh, so let's look at, let's look at the, the, the disciples, honestly. I love the honesty. They said, listen, yeah. this is just too hard for humans. <laughs> Increase our faith, Jesus, because not impossible. People hurt me all day long. You want me to forgive them? I need you to increase my faith. So that, I'm laughing inside because I, I can imagine Jesus said, it's a work. Are you serious? And they said, increase my faith. So and believe me, this is hard for even me to do sometimes to uh, forgiveness. I do do it, but a little bit of me holds on to a little bit of that little wall saying, yeah, they hurt me, you hurt me. Listen, you, you shut out. You're not getting in again. So I understand the disciples saying this. I'm telling Jesus right now too. Increase my faith. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some people in the congregation here um, this evening, the audience, need to increase their faith. And remember now to share the link. Share the link. Anybody else want to um, comment on this? Just verse one to five here, Doctor Ephraim. You know, as human beings, <laughs> I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was, 
If a person came to me seven times saying, I repent, I'm going to say, stop lying to me. <laughs> because every time you're coming back, I repent. No, you're not serious. No, yeah. you have not repented. That is what I would think from a human standpoint. Me too. I would think that he's not serious. He's just playing yeah. games. That's yeah. right. Uh, maybe right. maybe the only saint on the here would think differently is Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think the same. That that person is not serious. Seven times mm -hmm. they're joking. They yes, are exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think that way to Jennifer? Yes, I would say you got to be joking. Do you think I'm a joke? Do you, you know? I would. Yeah, definitely. And I would be so serious. I said, "What is this? I know of a person who." He apologize. He do the same thing over and over and keep apologizing. And I say, you know what? I don't need your apology. Keep it. Because if you mm. didn't really sorry for what you did, you wouldn't be keep on repeating it and doing it and apologize. Your apology means nothing. <laughs> wow. She's serious too, Pat. You see her face? She's serious about that. <laughs> yes, she's serious. She's serious. And, and the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. Mm. And now... The Lord um, used the example of a mulberry or sycamore tree, some of the Bible says, and there are reasons why he called that. Could you read verse, verse 6 there for me, Courtney? If you have faith as a small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry, mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. So, so it seems to me that Jesus was comparing uh, that act of forgiving that person who is always coming back to you like, like this um, mulberry tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, so the act of, of constant forgiveness is like this mulberry tree. And we're going to learn a little more about the mulberry tree or the uh, sycamore tree. Then they use them interchangeably to see why Jesus used that. Uh, so why Jesus choose to use this tree as an example of bitterness and uh, unforgiveness? Dr. Ephraim, can you read it for us? There are a number of characteristics of the tree. Let's look at some of the characteristics of the sycamine and the mulberry tree. A, first, the sycamine tree has a very large and deep root structure, about 30 feet or more. Because the root structure went down so far, it was hard to kill. It would just keep springing back up. Bitterness and unforgiveness is like that. How is it like that? Uh, can somebody elaborate on that? Because you're only cutting off the top. Okay. So the root is deep down in the ground. You'd have to dig down to get the whole root out if you want to get rid of it. So it would keep springing back up. And this is what bitterness really does. Because when you're holding that anger and that bitterness and that unforgiveness, it's going to keep coming back. It's going to keep playing in your head. It's going to make you sick. There are so many ways it's going to come back in the form of stress and make you sick. And you're always going to think about it, especially when you see that person, you're going to have a different feeling. Your emotions are going to change. So it just keeps coming right back. So Bitterness is just like the tree, you know, uh, you see the person and you're triggered. You think about it, you're triggered. The tree keeps springing back up. It's like, it's like resentment and um, unforgiveness. It's like magnet, you know, when you see the person or you, know, or you remember something, it's like it just keep on you and eating away like on you so that instead of for you to be better or forgiving, it just create a bitterness in you. So it's like mm. the resentment and sometimes pride sort of started to develop and so forth. Our ego started go go with um, unforgiveness or bitterness. Yes. So you see how deep it is then? You see why J Jesus um, um, compared the sycamine as or the mulberry or some sycamore tree? Because the roots of bitterness and forgiveness can go very deep. I remember I was passing at a church uh, no, you won't know what I'm talking about. And there was a wonderful lady there, very gifted, very talented. I want to tell you what position she was in. But she she was so bitter. She was so sharp. It, it, it's like you don't want to go close to her. 
Mm. Later on, I fact I realized that her husband walked out and left her with a with her child when about 15 years ago. And she could not have forgiven the husband. Even if it poisoned the guy's life, the child's life, and it poisoned up those who are around her. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is talking about here, the, the deep roots of unforgiveness and bitterness. I wonder if there's anybody understand what we're talking about. No, I need to uproot it right now. All right. Here's a second feature. Could, could you continue? B, second, just as a sycamine tree grows quickly, so does bitterness and unforgiveness. Fast-growing, ugly attitudes are allowed to grow freely and spoil the condition of the heart. Bitterness and unforgiveness is deadly, and it entertained they will kill. And if entertained, sorry, they will kill your joy, steal your peace, and cancel your spiritual life and poison your relationships. Mercy. Mm -mm -mm. That one hit hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But again, uh, bitterness and forgiveness, man, it's, it, it's, it's rough. All right. Third. Third, the sycamine tree produced a fig that was very bitter to eat. It could not be eaten whole. It had to be nibbled a little bit at a time. Jesus is letting us know that the fruit of bitterness and unforgiveness is bitter. Most people who are bitter and filled with unforgiveness chew on their feelings for a long time. Mm. Mm. But you guys have anything to say about B and C? Is that so? You know? Forgiveness. As you look back over your own life, as you look back at people you relate to, uh, do you see this happening in their life? And then the final, um, the fourth characteristic that we're going to share of this um, sycamine or the mulberry tree is what? For the sycamine tree was pollinated only by wasp. This tree had to be stung in order to produce, to reproduce. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard a bitter person say, I have been stung by that person once, it will not happen again. These people have been stung by a situation and their hearts have been pollinated by bitterness and unforgiveness. Any comments from people in the congregation or, or, or the team here and, 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 and the comparison That's between unforgiveness and bitterness and the sick of mind tree? How God used nature, the animals with the tree, how the sting of a wasp. <laughs> it just blew my mind. And we get stung all the time by other human beings. But it says, now when that happens, you have to allow that to grow. So this is a process for you to build up all that, to, to get that animosity towards that person or to your husband or to your children. That takes time. That's not yeah. automatic. So we see it here. You have to repeatedly sting me and sting me and think like fighting Tyson. Well, fighting Tyson ain't gonna last that long, sorry. Fight Muhammad Ali, but he likes to go long distances. You have to keep a jip and jive and jip and jive. But he would sting you and sting you and sting you. So it's the same thing with humans. We get stung and stung. And we go, you know what? This is the last time. <laughs> we do this, that's it. We had it up to what? Here. So this is telling me, for me, really, that God is telling me, they're going to keep doing this to you. As long as the devil's still here, as long as you're breathing, you will be hurt all the time. But you have to forgive. Mm -hmm. But as you say that, is the devil really using that? Because when you when you become a Christian and you're following God and you're following in his word, when you see how God taught us how to forgive, even by saying our father prior, it humbles you. It humbles you because not only that, he helps. I'm talking from experience. He we will helps. come. We will come to that solution part of it now. Well, later on, Jennifer, that's a good point. But mm -hmm. uh, we want to just deal with it. We want to face the fact that it is as it is, and then we'll come to the solution in the last part of the study, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Pastor, Pastor, before you go on, I, I I thought I saw Sister Watson Byers. Her mic was on off. Yes. So I'm wondering if she has something. Is this the buyers? Watson buyers? You want to say something? No, I'm sorry. No, I don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Is Goodbye. there anybody want to respond to the comparison between bitterness and forgiveness and the sycamine or the mulberry tree? I mean, sycamore, sycamore. I think we used to pronounce the sycamore, sycamore tree. tree. There are different <laughs> versions of the of scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Good evening. Good evening. Everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, what about when you, you forgive, but then you decide not to participate in that particular relationship and then you are accused of being unforgiving yes yes yeah, that's a question and that question is coming is going to be answered in part two of this but it's a good question just hold it there <laughs> but i know it's a very good question because especially in the christian community people um, accuse you of all sort of stuff when you take that approach. But as we said last week, um, forgiveness doesn't mean reunion. It doesn't mean you're gonna be going back and have the same type of relationship. Some people have to love them from a distance. We said last week, but it doesn't mean you don't love them, but you, you, you have to sometimes protect your own um, safety. If that person is an abusive person uh, and you go back to them, they may just kill you this time. Mm, our boundaries. But, Boundaries, you know, they have to be boundaries. So this is a delicate thing and that's a very good question, but we're gonna deal with it a little uh, later on, all right? Can I say, all right. can I say something? Sure, sure. <laughs> what I find, because I have been looking at my own life, right? Hmm. And what I find, I have no problems with the forgiveness part, but I always find that I become guarded. Right. Protected. Guarded. Right. right. Guarded. Yes. Guarded. All right. Where, okay, where the relationship will not be the same. Yes, I'll talk to you, but I am very, what should I say, selective of how much or what I say. And my responses are very short. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, no. Or if I see you, I'll say a quick hi and keep moving. Yeah, Not right. to really get into talking with you. Not that I have anything against you because I really don't feel anything within me, no emotions or anything when I see you. But it's just that I just feel like I need to guard myself not to go through that hurt again. Hmm. That's understandable. That's why the lady was almost asking a question similar to that. Because you see the pain of forgiveness. That's why Jesus, that's why the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Mm. And what, if, what the guys cry, Lord, we have a hand. Increase our faith. So we're gonna take some 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 stories now from the team and from an, and from any audience who have um, who have had to struggle with this forgiveness. Before we go on to the stories, Pastor, we have a hand up for a while. All right, take that, right. Sister Margaret, you can unmute. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, I, I wonder whether, um, whether it is bad to be guarded, especially when I hear that um, there is no emotion involved. Um, so that tells me that there is no hatred involved um because again i i may have mentioned it before but i continue to ponder um what god did in the in the garden of eden that he did put a sword and he did set his boundaries even though the couple were forgiven he still set the boundaries um and then i also think about um David and when um, I'm I'm forgetting the man's name, but he the man had worked for Saul at first and then came to uh, you know with wanting peace with David, and when and and when no, he, no go on go on go on no sorry when, when um when he when when that man uh, was killed, I think of David saying. Uh, you died a fool's death. 
So I'm wondering, and, and, and he went on to say, uh, your hands were not tied behind your back. So yeah. I took that to understand that you know that you had killed this man's brother. You know that you had something against this man. Um, you should have been guarded uh, is what I'm, is what, how I took it. So I'm, I wonder whether God, I mean, no, we're not to have hatred, but I wonder whether being guarded is a bad thing. I don't think it is a bad thing to be honest, um, especially when you're not sure of the of how uh, if the people repented or not. You remember in the case of Joseph, Joseph he tested those those brothers uh, over a number of times to see that their hearts were chained, trained were were changed before he um, he trusted them. Yes, Pastor, and I think also of. John the Baptist, who said, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Mm -hmm. mm. But, um, but we have to make sure that we, are for, that we have forgiven those who hurt us. And forgive them doesn't mean that we're going to take them back into our bosom, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> we have to protect ourselves. Anybody else on the team, do you have any experience with... Um, uh, challenges to forgive that you want to share. Thank you, Dr. Ephraim. Thank you, Margaret. And I could talk about the, the same um, incident that I spoke of the last time with the young lady, my friend, that sent me the letter. And someone that I looked at as a sister that I really opened up my heart to. And when I told the pastor about it, he said, oh, you're going to have to forgive her. Yes, but I will tell you, I had to ponder on it a little bit. The first time when I actually saw her after the letter, I didn't approach her because I didn't feel at that point that I was ready because I know myself and I just didn't feel that I was prepared and I was ready at that point. And then the second time after that, when I saw her, it was funny because the same time I was going to her, she was coming to me. And she said, I was coming to ask you to forgive me. And I said, I was coming to you to tell you I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and guess where this happened? On the big tree right in the churchyard, we were both going to each other. <laughs> and, you know, it, it was funny. And she said, I don't know why I, I, I said those things and why I did those things. I guess I was just upset. And I just lashed out at you and so on and so forth. You know, and she said all that and we spoke. Then she came up to the U.S. and she was like, oh, we should all have a reunion because it was a group of us that normally keep together at church. And she was saying that, oh, let us all meet in Washington, D.C. I did not go. <laughs> I really did not go. But I see her and we can we talk and things like that. But it's just that that hurt i don't know if many would understand the type of hurt that i'm talking when you take someone like family and then they hurt you like that i actually felt like part of me died or part of me was broken when that situation happened mm. it was hurtful and i promised myself that you know no human being going to hurt me that way again. Mm -hmm. wow. And because of that, I am guarded in the sense of even making friends. Yes, I make friends. And yes, I do talk to people. And yes, I do love people and things like that. But I don't know if I would call it a fair. But I just always promise myself that no one is going to get that close where I'm going to feel that broken again, if anything happens. So you see folks, there's some, thank you very much. Somebody said, yes, you should forgive. Sharon said, you should forgive. However, trust must be regained, regained and that takes time. You know, Pastor, what comes to mind is Jesus and Judas. Jesus knew that Judas was gonna sell him out. But Jesus gave him power 
to heal. And Judas came back and said he was very happy and boasting that, hey, we cast out devil in your name. And Jesus did not um, figure we need the heart of Christ, right? And Jesus did not put a separation between every, everything that the other disciple received, Judas, Judas received, right? And so I think we need to ask the Lord to give us that spirit, that mind of Christ, that no matter what, no matter if we are on the cross, he's asking his father, please forgive them for they know not what they've done. And so we have to, we have to ask the Lord to, to be more like his son, Jesus, uh, pastor. That's a very important point. Um, you know, Christ give forgiveness before we ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this will go back to um, something that was said before. But again, I remember now we're talking about struggling to forgive. It's difficult, but we have to do it if we want to be healed in body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know. And, and as we go through, you're going to realize that Christ, God never find it that easy. It cost him a lot to forgive us. It's the first time it came home to me while we're presenting this thing. It cost him a lot. And it's going to cost us a whole lot. Mm. a whole lot to forgive but we're going to get there anybody else want to share your own story your own struggles and while you're doing that we want you to share this with your um, friends um, link the link as what I could need to say normally say link the link you know I just want to share pastor I was in that situation and um, I I know that the person needed to hear that I said um, ask for forgiveness, right? So I asked the person, forgive me. Um, not much, not that, not for me in essence, but for the person. So sometimes forgiveness is not for you, you know, it's for the other person because the other person might be going through a lot, um, a lot. And you might have to ask the person, either tell them that you forgive, gave them, or you might have to ask for forgiveness. You know, sometimes we we have people, or we we vex with people, and the people don't even remember that they were vexed with you, and then they go and they, they live in their life. While you, every time you see them, there is some issue. There's a mental um, repeat repetition, and so forgiveness it, it it takes it takes some time. It's for you. And sometimes it's for the other person. Mm, all right. Well, thank you. Yeah, all right. Let's move on and see what we have here struggling for forgive. I like this um, article here, but I want to show you um, the dangers of unforgiveness. This was done by Christian Broadcasting Network, the Forgiveness Project. It's one of my favorite, um, favorite clips on the dangers of unforgiveness. That's interesting. We were showing all the while, but now I don't know. One minute. Click, 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 click the arrow again, Pastor. Yeah, I click it, but I don't know. Unable to locate the link. Whoa. I'm sorry for that one, but I don't know why it's misbehaving, but it was showing uh, the dangers of unforgiveness. Yes. It tells us that six to three percent of um, people with uh, cancer, that people can have uh, chronic um, forgiveness issues, unforgiveness issues, because of the bitterness. This is interesting. Uh, the bitterness that um, a spirit of unforgiveness carries with it. So, so again, cancer can make us sick. It poison our soul or inner being. Uh, so those of us who want to be healed in body, mind, and spirit, by God's grace, have to learn to forgive. And I have five things here um, that Dr. Terrellon says we should know about forgiveness, and I want all everyone on the line to read one. Carlton, could you go with number one? 
Yes. Uh, Pastor, can you pause that for because I bring up the um the CDN. It's you a video it on YouTube. I can um share it. Share it then. Okay. It's so I stop here sharing and share it. All right. All right. All right. Price that low and they still lose. Go back to the beginning. Not hearing the Courtney. You're muted, Courtney. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna share my share my screen. I think that's it. The sound is already shared. Okay. Um. Did you know that unforgiveness can actually make you sick? It's classified as a disease in medical books. Now, forgiveness therapy is being used to help treat diseases like cancer. Dr. Stephen Standiford, a cancer surgeon, says unforgiveness makes people sick and keeps them sick. It's important to treat emotional wounds or disorders um, because they really can hinder someone's reactions to the treatments, even someone's willingness to pursue treatment. Of all cancer patients, 61% have forgiveness issues, and of those, more than half are severe. That's according to research by Dr. Michael Berry, a pastor and the author of the book, The Forgiveness Project. These negative emotions, this anger and hatred, creates a state of chronic anxiety. Chronic anxiety very predictably produces adrenaline and cortisol which, de which deplete the production of natural killer cells, which is your body's mm -hmm. foot soldier in the fight against cancer. When a person forgives from the heart, which of course is the gold standard that we use in Matthew 18, forgiveness from the heart, we find that they're, uh, they're able to find a sense of peacefulness. Uh, quite often our patients refer to that as a feeling of lightness. Lori, we don't realize what a burden anger and hatred is mm -hmm. until we let it go. And the first step in forgiveness therapy is recognizing forgiveness is not the same thing as condoning what a person did, which mm. is the major hurdle for most patients. Mm. Thank you, Courtney. Wow, isn't that, uh, isn't that um, yeah. serious, Carlton? It's so powerful, wow, wow. And it's true, Pastor, you, you think about it in, in your, my own life and your life and everybody, when you see the person, <laughs> You can't eat. You can't talk. <laughs> you can't. You can't say hello. You get angry. Everything just shuts down in the body, and that, and when that happens, digestion stops. Your blood pressure rises. Yeah, your cortisone is released. Toxins are released in your body. So you are a toxic bomb ready to explode on that person. Even if they're just across the room, they may not be looking your way, but their presence does something to you where all the toxins are released in the body. So I believe that's a, a great subject that we need to be talking about today and that it can help us mind, body, and spirit. And I need that myself. Mm, so then, you know, uh, we are extending your life naturally. We're healing up the nations. We have told you guys about countless natural remedies uh, to help with some of your ailments. But, if, if these unresolved um, emotional and spiritual issues like bitterness, unforgiveness, envy and jealousy is not taken care of, it's gonna be very difficult for us to produce the healing that we need. Because you know, the Bible said, God wishes above all things that we prosper, that's materially and being held physically, even as your soul prospers. So, so soul prosperity, Brother Carlton, is at the foundation for physical prosperity and material prosperity. But most of the time, we tend to drop this out, the soul part. That's why it needs, we need to have a right relationship with God. That's why yeah. one of the main purpose of this healing of the nation is to point sin, sick men and women to the man of Calvary. Yeah. The only one who can help us with those deep down wounds that we're suffering from. Hmm. All right. So let's let 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 let's 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 really digest that a little, you know, hmm. and and see if we need to um ask for forgiveness right now. Let me go back to the next um um. Yeah, this is where we were a while ago. 
five things that um, Dr. Terrellang says that we should know about forgiveness. Who want to go with number one? You asked me, Pastor. Said, yes, yes. Is the only way to be fair to yourself. People have said forgiveness is just not fair. Why should I have to forgive the person? Who did me wrong and let me go free as if it never happened? That just isn't fair, they say. Continue. When they say that forgiveness is not fair, I tell them that forgiveness is the only way to be fair to yourself. Mm -hmm. Would it be fair to you that the person you hurt once, once goes on hurting you the rest of your life when you refuse to forgive you are giving that person hurt you, who hurt you, one, the privilege of hurting you all over again. Wow. All right, can I see it? Yes, let's remember that. You want to underscore that. Continue. Remember this person to get the benefits of forgiveness is the person who does the forgiving. The first person who benefits from forgiving is the person who does the forgiving. It's so true. Amen. It's so true. First person who gets the benefit from a forgiving it's is so the true. person who does the forgiving. It's so true. I like that perspective, Carl. And if we look on that, um, that is going to benefit us rather than it's going to um, the other person getting away free. This will help us. So true. And, and it's not making you a weak person, but a lot of us think, including myself, we think that's a weakness that we have. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to show I'm a weak person. They got to come to me. But we see it here now. Let's go to you. Let's go to the person first. It, it releases me and releases them at the same time. Wow. So then um, let's think about that, beloved, and move on. These are wise counsels. We want to be well, we want to be whole. It, but nobody promises you that is going to be easy, but it's possible, right? Amen. Okay. So if you think forgiveness is unfair, let me tell you that once you have been wrongly hurt, forgiveness is the only way to be fair to yourself. Let's say forgiveness is the only way to be fair to myself. One more time. Forgiveness is the only way to be fair to myself. And I want to be fair to myself. All right, Courtney, number, number, number two. Forgivers are not doormats. <laughs> Forgivers are not doormats. Some people have the notion that if you forgive, you make yourself a doormat, doormat for people to walk on. A whoop. Nothing could be more wrong than this. It takes more strength to forgive than to keep on being bitter and angry. Is that true, Courtney? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How <laughs> weird. Yeah, it takes a lot. It it takes a you know um between me and my wife. Sometimes we have disagreement, and then we we start, well we have not done that in a long time. But vex, we vex. Oh, two big, big individual vex with each other, and then they sleep on the edge of the bed. Foolishness, Pastor. Foolishness. <laughs> you understand? And there's space in the middle. No room in the middle. And so um, we need to think about it sometimes. Things as marriage couple, marriage, husband and wife, what we do. And, and, and sometimes we don't even remember uh, why we were vexed. Yeah. So forgiveness and sorry, I am sorry. We men tend not to like that word, but we <laughs> need to integrate it into our life. The moment it happens, sometimes we have to think about it and analyze it before we say, Sorry. No, that's it. Sorry, and that's it. <laughs> well, it's more easily said than done. It takes time pulling. Let's look, look at a story that he tells now. Go on to show that. One time, a lady called in on a radio show to tell about how she had suffered the worst thing that could happen to a mother. A drunk driver in her neighborhood swayed, swayed, swayed his car out of control and hit and killed a three-year-old little girl who was praying on the grass near the curb. She died before they reached the hospital. Now in a rage, her mother asked, oh, 
I could expect her to forgive a monster who got himself drunk, then took mm. his car and killed her precious three-year-old daughter. That's a fair statement, right, Courtney? Yeah, a monster. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, let's see what happened. As soon as she hung up, another woman called to say she had to speak to the first caller because a similar thing had happened to her. A drunk driver killed her five-year-old boy four years before, right in front of her own house. But listen to what she went on to say. She said that for two years, she lived in the fog of terrible rage. She fantasized the most horrible things happening to the man who killed her child. She wanted him to suffer more than he had made her suffer, to have nightmares the rest of his life and then burn in hell. Mercy. Mm. Do you think people still feel that way when people do them wrong things, Courtney? Yep. Yes, we're still on the earth, Pastor, yes. But not the righteous people and, um, and uh, extending your life naturally, though. <laughs> Pastor, yes, you're funny, Pastor. <laughs> It happened and to this, all of us, Pastor. And this holy audience just listened to us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but, but thank God the story didn't end there. We'll continue. Amen. Well, after living in the misery of her blind, unhealing rage for two years, she woke up to the fact that the drunk who killed her son was now killing her inside, a day at a time killing mm. her soul and she was helping him to do it mercy wow. you see it takes time brother called it took her two years to come to that realization that the man not only killed her son but was killing him her on the inside mm -hmm. continue she was wise enough to see her pastor who listened to her story and told her what she already knew that the only way out of her pain and prison was to set out on the journey of mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes, even for this wretched man who had done such a terrible thing to her. Continue, Continue Pastor. Yes, yes. When you forgive, you can turn your miserable misery into a mis ministry. They had to begin a chapter of mothers against drunk drivers in their town. They had to make it known that if you forgive a drunk driver, it does not mean that you must tolerate drunk driving. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Amen. You know, Pastor, I think I saw yeah. this testimony where the mother, I think someone, a uh, gentleman perhaps killed his son and he was in jail. The gentleman was in jail and she was angry with that gentleman. And then she, I think she wrote a letter to him and they they um, created this uh, relationship. And when that gentleman came out, he lived, he, he became her neighbor and her son. Right? Wow. And so yeah. forgiveness will um man, it's, it's it's beautiful if we know how to forgive. Yep. Yes, yeah, somebody said what what are the people saying in the chat there, Jennifer? Sister Jennifer? Yeah, sorry. I was unmuting. Yeah, some people what's going on? Yes. Some people are saying it's very real and that, that, that meaning revenge. They're saying that revenge is very real. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to go up. All uh, right, Sister Ellen says, step to Christ. Those seeking forgiveness must themselves have a forgiven. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, I can't. Uh, I'm gonna come squeeze back squeeze your eyes, Sister Jennifer, you will see us. <laughs> It's not that I'm not seeing it. Is my computer jump um, when I try to scroll down? Uh huh. You have to my scroll back up. Um, yeah, my computer over. jump. Yeah. All right. She says that those seeking forgiveness must themselves have a forgiving attitude. 
If we expect uh, our own prayers to be heard, we must forgive others in the same manner and to the same extent as we hope to be, be forgiven. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so that's a good part of the answer, right? I'm wow, happy she write that too, because I was yes. saying the same thing that I learned to meditate on our father prior. Because even though sometimes I am not looking, I'm, I forgive others, but it's somebody else, you know, like even sometimes I might do something and I want somebody to forgive me. So I am looking, I meditate on our father prior because I used to say it every, not used to, I said every day. <laughs> and when, right. I, when that part comes, so that's, I like that what she says, and it's coming from Step to Christ. So there's a part in Step to Christ book where it's come, it talk about forgiveness. All right then. Well, so, so another point that he made here, forgiveness, forgiving doesn't mean condoning. Yeah. That's what we heard in the video. That's why a lot of people don't like this thing of forgiveness because they think you have condoned the bad stuff, the people. For those who wrong you, but do not tolerate it. Forgive those who wrong you, but do not tolerate the wrongdoing. You are forgiven for what you did, but stop it. Don't do it again. <laughs> uh, That's it. Don't do it again. Amen. It's yeah. just like the story that we read first. Remember Christ said, if a man uh, harm you uh, seven times in one day and he repent, you must forgive him. But remember, mm -hmm. no, it's going to take faith to do this. You know, The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. You're crazy if we can't do this. But Jesus said, That's what I require of you. So, hmm. so this is the man. This is a divine action. It's not a human action. Forgiveness, you know, it's incredible. All right. Wait, Pastor. Wait, Pastor. Wait. I'm looking in the chat, and someone right. asks about Shirley. Um, Marcia. She says, "Where is the other young lady? Not the nurse. I have not seen her in a while." She's talking about Shirley. Yes. Yes, I spoke with her this week, and it looks like she get busy in some other activities, and she doesn't know when she will come back. But I will tell her that she is missed. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, Dr. Ephraim, number four. Before we go on to number four, we have some comments in the chat. All right. Uh, there is someone saying that the desire for revenge is real, very real. Mm -hmm. And Deborah says, not because a person is a Christian does not mean we don't have forgiveness issues. And Sister Ellen says, the desire of ages says the prayer for forgiveness is always answered immediately. Mm -hmm. And Sister Lori said, I, I really miss, um, I really miss Sister Daly. <laughs> okay. I'll tell her. Right, okay. One of the things that I was going to say too is that if we look at forgiveness, right, as an outgrowth of love, and then we look back at what Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. I think that if we look at it in that way, it would help us a little in terms of not being able to forgive readily if anyone is struggling with that. Because I can say, I can look at my past before I became a, a Christian. And then when I became a Christian, it, even if I didn't do the wrong and I hear in my ears, because I listen to the still small voice saying, oh, I tell the person you forgive them. I would just call the person up on the phone and tell them I forgive you. And they, they feel comfortable. And then we talk and interact again. But like I, I was saying, I was the one that will kind of be guarded <laughs> because you don't yeah. want to go through the pain again. But we have to look at it as an outgrowth of love. And we have to love our neighbors as ourselves. Yes, we'll struggle as Christians and we cannot do anything of our own selves. So we have to truly pray and ask, just like the disciples says to increase our faith, ask God to help us to be forgiven. So many of us are praying that, that prayer this evening. Lord, increase our faith. Mm. Increase our faith. This time is not to move mountains, uh, literal mountains. It's a, it's a moving mountain of unforgiveness and bitterness. That is even more important to be moved than literal mountains out there. Mm -hmm. the, the mountain in our heart, Pastor. It's in our heart, yes, Courtney. And, 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 and it's crushing many people. 
crushing the life out of us. All right, continue on, Dr. E. Okay, forgiveness does not mean reunion. Some people think that if you forgive somebody you once trusted, it means that you must go back into the same relationship with him or her that you had before. Not necessarily so. Forgiveness doesn't mean reunion. For your own safety, you have to love some person from a distance. You will ask God for the ability to choose to do what is in the best interest of the person when necessary. Do you think the church understand? Do you think a lot of people in the church understand this point here, sis? No. And I think that, and that's because forgiveness a lot of times in the church is being mispresented because I know that in my church, they tell you, oh, you need to forgive the person and things should go back the same. That is not necessarily so. It all depends on the situation. It depends on the circumstances. And, and I will say that, and I'll give the example. If a person has abused you or raped you, right? Are you going to go back around that person alone or to go back in that person's presence? You may be setting yourself up for the same situation again. Yes, you forgive the person, but you have to use wisdom. It may be a situation where you do not need to go back around that person because it may trigger old things. Like they say, old fire stick ain't hard to light. It may bring, you know, old feelings back. You may have to, if you're going to speak to that person, do not speak to that person alone, have companies with you. And so there are times when you, you have to use wisdom and you cannot, um, you know, make things be the same as before. Some persons are better, like it says, it's best to love some persons from a distance. You would have a better relationship. So people, so people find it difficult to do that. Oh, uh, uh, man, this is it. I have nothing else to do with them, you know? You can still love them, which means you're going to do what is in their best interest, no matter how you feel, but you're going to do it from a distance as much as possible. I know some people may not agree with this, but it's a very important point that we need to keep in mind because some of us can get killed if we don't really take this seriously. Hmm. And we have some interesting comments here, which is yeah, so true, are in the chat. If the church treasurer has been stealing funds, do you nominate him or her to that position again next year? <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that is an interesting question, and that is so true. Are you going to put the person back there? Then you're opening up yourself for that to situation to very likely happen again. Yeah. And Amy said, in the church, it is like forgiveness is synonymous to reconciliation. Um, and you are treated as an outcast if you keep your distance. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Forgiveness <laughs> doesn't mean re um, re reunion or reconciliation. Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really mean that. Mm. We have to be careful with, you know, reconciling. Okay, you are a Christian and you understand about forgiveness. And you're going to reconcile with the person doesn't mean that you have to be all chummy chummy with the person, you know, everything that you used to do with that person going to go back to the same, because we have to remember the devil has power too. the same temptations will arise. And the devil is very good at saying, oh, remember this and this and that and bring old things up. So we have to be very guarded and be very careful. Yes, we forgive, but we can forgive the person and love them from afar. And there is also a book that I've read, I Forgive You But, and it has a lot of um, principles in there in terms of forgiveness and a lot of biblical um, quotations and stuff. And I think it's a book that if persons are really interested in um, forgiving, that it would do a very good job because it gives you a lot of Christian scriptures and everything. Can we see it at all? Yes. Oh, where is it? I forgot, I forgave you. Right. But say something while you, um, you're um sharing, sharing, sharing. Yes, book. and this is a very good book. If someone is struggling and it gives you a lot of pointers how to forgive, 
It gives you reasons why you should forgive. It gives you stories of forgiveness, everything. And it has a lot of scriptures. Who is the author? The author is Lourdes E. Morales, um, Godmanson. Well, thank you for that, guys. She wrote that book. Let's go to number five now from Dr. Terrell. Jennifer, take away that. Number five is what? Number five says, forgiving is a journey. Some people suppose that you should be able to forgive everything in a single minute and be done with it. Hmm. God can forgive in the twinkling of an eye, but we are not God. Most of us need some time, especially if the hurt went deep and the wrong was bad. So when you forgive, be patient with yourself. Hmm. You uh, don't have to... Go on. You don't have to wait until he or she says, I am sorry. Some people believe that you should not forgive anyone who wrong you unless he or she crawls back on his knees, says he or she is sorry and begs you for forgiveness. Remember, God's forgiveness is available before we ask for it. Father, forgive them for they know no, what? supposed to be not no, what not they do. Yeah. Yeah. So should you, so should yours be. Right, so here's it folks. Um, the person doesn't have to come to you to ask you to forgive. You forgive the person even before they ask mm -hmm. for your own benefit. Because guess what? If you wait for them to come on uh, and say, I'm sorry, they may never do it for the rest of your life. Mm. And who's gonna be in hell? Who's gonna be in mental, emotional pain? Who's going to get sick? The one who is waiting for them to come and forgive. So do it right now. Like when Christ was on the cross, he said, Father, what? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Did anybody ask him for forgiveness then? When he said that? No. No. So forgiveness is available before we ask for. Because somebody said earlier on, it's the attitude. We have a, it's, 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 we have a forgiving attitude. Anybody make any more comment on, the, on this in the... Yes, so read from the chat there for us. We have a few, Sister Donnelly says it's available, but you have to ask him first. Sister Colleen says, even for people who don't apologize, we still have to forgive them. Mm -hmm. And Sister Amy said, forgiveness is a process. It takes time. Forgiveness is healing. Yeah, it takes time. So please don't kill yourself. And, and, don't, and when others do you wrong, don't, 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 don't be turned off if I, they don't say immediately, I'm sorry. They may not even realize it. You may have to pray about it and the spirit may have to convict them. But the thing, it's a journey. So be patient with yourself, be patient with others and the Lord will see you through. So, so far for those of you who are just coming on, we're talking about struggling to forgive, but the only way we can be healed in body, mind and spirit is if we forgive no matter how difficult that is. And we use Jesus' example in, um, in um, Luke 17 with the disciples and the mulberry tree. You could still go over this and look at it. I think it's on Facebook. Is it being streamed? I think so. Yeah, yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. <clears throat> right. And then we just look at five factors or five things we should know about forgiveness. I'm telling you, the part that really appealed to me was the next part that we're going to do and try to close off this part. Let me go on the... Um, the greatest example of uh, in learning to forgive is God. It cost him everything to forgive us. Do you think it was easy for him to forgive us? Mm -mm. Hello? No. No. Sometimes, so. we, sometimes we make it feel as if it's an easy oh. thing for him to do. Because of his love. But, exactly. but, but because of his love, was it easy? Mm-mm. What no, it still was wasn't easy. It was hard. Look what it cost him. Let's go through this now. Now, before Adam and Eve sinned, God placed them in a paradise island called Eden. It was a place of perfect, wholesome, healthy, harmonious relationship. Everything he gave them except one tree, they should not touch it. Shouldn't they be grateful? Right. Um, they had everything they needed. All they had to do was to trust and obey him. 
pot. The pot came up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My grandmother always told me that an ungrateful child or ungrateful picnic is a worse curse um, to his parents. Ungratefulness. Worse than witchcraft. Yes, that's what I told you to Ephraim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ungratefulness worse. worse than witchcraft. Yeah, because this is exactly, they were very ungrateful to what God did for them. And I wonder if we too, who have been blessed with so many things, can be ungrateful. Now, they betrayed the relationship. I'm going to, um, they betrayed, uh, they betrayed God. They betrayed God. Trust. God's trust. Big up, they betrayed God's trust by believing the enemy. And that one action broke all the relationship between man and his creator, between man and himself, between man and woman, between man and uh, the environment. Mm. Do you see mm. how dangerous that was? One mm. betrayal. All right, now look what else it cost. Somebody else here tell me what it cost. Mm. Uh, their disobedience wrecked and filled God's perfect creation with sickness and disease. Mm. Look at it. Mm. Before, um, before, when man was living in paradise, there was no mental and psychological issues. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But after they sinned, what were some of the mental and psychological issues that came up? They're blaming each other. Uh, blaming blaming each other. other. Yeah. Viciousness. Depression. Depression. But they were also afraid, you know? Mm -hmm. They were afraid. Yeah. Fear, shame, and guilt arose. It was not there before. Anxiety. These are mental and psychological mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. that we're dealing with today. Am I right? Oh, yes. All right. Let's go on again and see what it did. Was there any social problems that arose as a result of their disobedience? Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were what? Blaming one another mm -hmm. and kill, kill, pain, kill. Blame, well. game. Mm -hmm. And Blame then the curse game. ended down. Uh huh. Wow. Let's see what else what happened. What happened to the environment? Oh, boy. The boys and thistles and thorns. Thistles and thorns. Mm -hmm. Poisonous viruses like. Um, like um, oh, like what we suffer from now came. Mm -hmm. So can you would you forgive these people who destroy your creation, who destroy your house like that? Mm. Physically, they what? They die. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible said spiritually there was a nakedness in their soul. The Bible said before they sin, they were naked and no no shame. And after they sin, they were naked and ashamed. Yes. That's the void that we feel in our hearts that we try oh, to fulfill yes. with pleasure, sex, money, position, education. Al alcohol. <laughs> alcohol, Courtney. Mm -hmm. But who caused that? It wasn't God. Devil. It was man in his disobedience to God. Should God forgive him? When he mm -hmm. messed up, when, when, when we messed up everything that God gave him. When you think about that as you think about your children who disappoint you, as you think about your spouses who left you, you know, as you think about co-workers and what they've done to you, as you think about church members, have they done uh, as terrible as Adam and Eve did to the father? Think about that. Mm -hmm. What else what is did the sin did for, um, for them? Separated, Separated from, them from God. Yeah. So I'm telling you folks, when I went through this and see how much it cost God, it, it amazed me. God had a choice to do what? Destroy Adam and Eve or uh, forgive and reconcile them. Wow. Don't you think oh. that was very painful to God? Mm. So I don't know, I don't know, Carlton, if you're Children, do you something like that if you would want to forgive them? And Jennifer, I don't know if you'd want to forgive them. And Courtney, I don't know if you want to forgive them. <laughs> like what Abba and Eve did to God. Hmm. We're talking about beloved, uh, struggling to forgive. It's difficult, but we have to do it. Right. Well, God's plan of redemption and restoration is based on his what? Forgiveness and reconciliation of mankind to himself through the costly sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The costly sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
All right, could somebody read that for us? It's the plan put into play. Okay, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, 8. And I shall put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and it shall bruise you in the head. Genesis 3, 15. Yes. Do you look what Revelation 13, 8 says? That God foresaw that this was going to happen. It didn't take him by chance, but in his infinite wisdom, this, had, this is the way uh, man could learn to love him. Jesus was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was not just literally slain and Calvary. So when man sinned, man should have died. But Jesus Christ intervened, mm -hmm. step in, and commute the sentence mm -hmm. from death. Mm. Man, I'm telling you, this touched me, man. And not only that, but look what God said. They put enmity between who? Between who? The enemy. The enemy. Between Satan and, and us. Uh -huh. You see that word enmity? It means hatred. I if see. God didn't put that hatred dear Brother Carlton, Satan would have killed every one of us because we would have all fallen for his deception. But, 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 but we don't want to be down. We yeah. hate it because of what God put there. God is a good God. Send his son before we were um, even um, before he came to Calvary. And now we put hatred there. He loves us. So he wanted to be restored. He wanted us to be restored. That's amazing. Come on. Will you follow God or Satan's plan? That's the choice you have today. Will you learn to forgive like he forgave? Wow. Now, could you read this for me, Courtney? What does God's plan do for sinful mankind? I want us to penetrate this thing a little bit, folks. It's deep. The Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 says, No, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and not imputing the trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. All right, stop there before we go on. Listen to this guy. When Christ died, the Bible said, what did he do? He has, he has what? Reconcile us to himself through Jesus Christ. What tense is that, Dr. Ephraim? Past tense. Past tense. So when, uh, when, uh, when, when were we reconciled to God? And that's to show you that, that it was already there. It, it's already, when he died on the cross, we were reconciled. So I want to say to you, beloved, God is not mad with you. You may feel as if he's mad with you. That's your conscience telling you that. He says we are to be reconciled is to be brought back into harmony. So when Christ died on the cross, with one hand, he pulled God and mankind, mankind together, and we are now reconciled. All we have to do is to realize it and accept it. We don't have to ask him to reconcile us. We have already been reconciled, although we did so much bad things to him. And look now, in the next year, I said, uh, not only have we reconciled, he said that Christ has reconciled the world. The world, your worst enemy, has been reconciled. God is not mad with them, but the devil is blind in their eyes that they should not see. And what else? Not imputing. That's an accounting term. He didn't impute or credit their sins or their trespasses to them. Mm. So call, so call, so call, and my friends on the line, no matter what we've done, mm -hmm. I want to let you know no matter what sins you've committed, Christ has not, God has not, come, God has not credited them to your account. They are credited to Jesus' account because he bore it in your stead. That's beautiful, I want everybody. Amen. Oh, I don't yes, know about is. you guys, but how is it? How is it? How it feels to you? But pastor, now, don't you think that this is the text why the church is saying that the relationship should go back to the same? Because if you think of the word reconciliation, right, you're basically restoring friendly relation. And I think this is where the misconception is. Yes. But you know, 
those who are reconciled have to come and accept the reconciliation. This is Christ loving them unconditionally, but if they don't love him, guess what? It will not benefit them. That's right. So you see, he tells us what to do now. He's not mad with you, so don't run away from him. Stop running away from him. And, and you know, in life, if people truly re repent, those of us who have forgiven them will over time bring back some of them closer to us. It, it, it's a chance. Now we are what? Ambassadors to Christ. As uh, through God we are pleading through us, we implore you on Christ that be reconciled to God. So I am not an ambassador of the United Nations or the United States, and I'm ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Highest authority. And Carlton with verse 21. Look what else Christ has done, what God has done to wretches like us. For he has made him who knew no sin to be sinful Carlton. This was that Carlton may become the righteousness in him. I put my name there. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to personalize it. Now that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So we sinful, cursed, wretched people, hmm. when we accept what Christ has done, the Bible says we become the what? The righteousness of God. Now, can you say that this evening? Through Christ, I am the righteousness of God. <laughs> Some people can't say it's not easy, you know, because you're not going to feel that way. But if you have been reconciled, that's worth telling you. Forgiveness was not only costly, but it elevates sinful mankind to a status we are godlike. Hmm. He might become the righteousness of, but Satan blinds your eyes. He wants you to believe that God is mad with you. You, 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 you mess up. I didn't want you to be mad with you. No, he's not mad with you. He took all his wrath on Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. That's why the cross must become the center of this. That's why we keep on telling you that the main object of what we do is to point sin, sick men and women to the man of Calvary. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. What an amazing change of status, God. Uh, status. God forgives, next brought mankind. God, uh, what? God know. is not mad with you. God is not mad with you. No, look at Jesus. How did Jesus relate to the, his ungrateful disciples? Could somebody look at the pictures and tell us? Did he wash their feet? Mm -hmm. Continue. He broke bread with them in the upper room, communion. That's communion? Yes. That was the last supper, yeah. Last supper. The last supper. And he kissed Judas on the cheek. When Judas greeted him with the holy kiss. <laughs> And he knew that all that was going to happen, right? And he knew, yeah. But he still hung on. <laughs> well, his forgiveness is a little bit taller than ours. And he came to serve, not to be served. And that's why mm -hmm. he washed the feet. And while he was doing the communion service, he knew that every one of these guys would cuss and say they don't know him. Yes. Including oh. Peter. And Jesus was going to sell him out for the price of a slave. So I don't know about you guys, but when I think silver. about the forgiveness, I just have to go back to Jesus. When it's hard to forgive, go back to God the Father and His Son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm. think about the ministry, a whole ministry of reconciliation. So that is yes. telling you, is it's a training. Mm -hmm. You know, you will go through the process. What mm -hmm. more can we ask for? Mm -hmm. What more know. do we want? Isn't God's love? Enough for you and me. And, and what, what are they saying in the chat? What are our friends saying? Let's hear from them. Maybe we just get away. Could that, uh, Jennifer, Dr. Ephraim, could you tell us what's happening and what our friends are? Sister responding? Angela King says, that's the love. And she said, um, Sister Cheryl says, God is the author of forgiveness because he loves us. We ourselves must practice the art of forgiveness and love each other. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sister Audrey says, um, happy Sabbath. I missed the name of the book on forgiveness. Could you please share the name of the book in the chat? Thanks. Okay, I'll do that. And Sister Angela said he extended to us his consummate love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
man you, it, it, when the spirit when the spirit takes over the church man it's just gonna it's, it would be so that we would see a lot of people coming to jesus amen a lot of the sickness that we have in the church would not be there because we're free inside yes free inside you could know all the doctrines right but if your heart is filled with bitterness and unforgiveness it kills you and you have some people now still don't know how to do it. They don't know that, you know, God is a forgiving God. And some, because of pride or ego, they stay away because they just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a God thing. No human being can do with that. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but why wow. is it always seems easier for a woman to forgive than a man? Man have too much ego. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one of the big things. No. Jesus looked down from the cross upon a scene that must have been distressing to him. Read mm -hmm. Jennifer. The Roman soldiers were gambling for his clothes. John 19 verses 23 to 24. In the criminals, I mean, sorry, the criminals on the crosses to either side of him were prevailing <laughs> him. Reviling him. Reviling. Revive, yeah, reviling him, sorry. Matthew 27 verses Verse 44, the religious leaders were mocking him in Matthew 27, verse 41 to 43, and the crowd was blaspheming him. And what was he doing? What was Jesus doing? He was dying to reconcile us. And look how the very people who were dying, uh, that he, 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 he was dying for, look how, how they treated him. He remember now Jesus ministered to them and he all this sick, but look how they treated him now. Man, we would man if we had that power, would just kill off all of them and go back to the farm. Mercy, Pastor. <laughs> Surrounded by by the most unworthy bunch. bunch. <laughs> unworthy bunch. <laughs> Jesus prayed for them. Father, forgive, forgive them. them. It's a prayer. It's a mercy. prayer of unmatched mercy and love. Wow. Man, that's coming mm -hmm. from heart. Wow. We're killing them. I know, Lord, help me. Even his agony, Jesus was concerned for the forgiveness of those who counted themselves among his enemies. Mm -hmm. um, Courtney? He asked he the Father to forgive the thieves on the cross who, re who jeered at him. The Roman soldiers who had mocked him, spit on him, beaten him, yanked out his beard, mm -hmm. ripped him, but a crown of thorns, put a crown of thorns on his head and nail him to the cross. Jesus asks forgiveness, for, Jesus asks forgiveness for the angry mob that had mocked him and called for his crucifixion. Mercy. 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 <laughs> That's tough, boy. That's. Lord, give me a heart like Jesus. Yes. Mm. Give me a heart like, that's all I find yeah. myself saying. Such mm. a tough death for us. Mm. Yeah. Wow. He was putting into practice the principle he taught in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Yes. And pray for pray those who persecute you. Jesus, the persecuted, prayed, prayed for, his, for persecuted. his persecutors. Uh, I wonder if mm -hmm. there's anybody in the congregation this evening online who needs to begin to do that right now. Hmm. I don't know what you're going through, but Jesus sent this message there to release you and to help you to be more like him. Well, listen to this. Read that for us, Dr. E. The Roman centurion at the foot of the cross, upon seeing how Jesus died, exclaimed, surely this man was the son of God, Mark 15, 39. One of the two thieves crucified with Jesus exercised faith in Christ who promised him paradise, Luke 23, you see what's 39 mm -hmm. to 43. See what's happening now? Christ's prayer um, was answered mm -hmm. in those in this two, continue for more. A member of the Sanhedrin publicly aligned himself with Jesus, John 19, 39. And a little over a month later, 3,000 people mm. in Jerusalem were saved in one day as the church began, Acts 2, 41. 
Praise the Lord. As Peter lift up Jesus before them, they were the one who crucified him. They mm -hmm. cried, what must we do to be saved? And I'm telling you, if we begin to lift up this crucified, risen, soon coming Savior, people will be drawn to him. And I trust tonight, online here, if you're with us and you have not yet received Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. We want you to, we encourage you to do that this evening. Receive him and be baptized. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Somebody said, man, what a God. Mm -hmm. Woo. What a God. Struggling to forgive? Yes, it's difficult. But think about how much Jesus has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. And to me, in my own heart, that is a thing that prevent me from holding forgiveness in my heart. When I think, oh, Christ has forgive me. All of us Amen. here have been, we, we, we have been blessed with light that many people in the world hasn't been blessed with. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Mm -hmm. So what is the command? Gandhi, um, first, I can just read that. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. That what is good, give me one second, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, mm. clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. I hear verse 32 now. Be ye kind, I learned this <laughs> from primary school. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ's sake has forgiven you. Ephesians 4 32. Amen. So this is the this is the this is the command. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving, forgiving one, another, one another. As God in Christ forgave you a long time mm -hmm. ago. Amen. Well, I wonder tonight if there's anybody here who needs to do that. Who needs to do that? Um, we're gonna. Is there anybody here tonight on the line who is saying, "Father, um, help me to forgive, like Jesus forgave"? Anybody here tonight? I want you to raise your hands. Where you are, raise your electronic hands. Or Raise your God-given hand. Just raise them up. Yeah. We, we want to be like Jesus. Yes, Deborah wants to be like Jesus. Anybody Amen. else? Just raise your hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Uh, v, uh, V3, V35 wants to do that. Anybody else? Amen. Praise God. Forgiveness can bring healing. Physical, Amen. spiritual, mental, emotional. Thank you, Anybody Jesus. Else? Anybody else want to say, Lord, give me the power to forgive. You know what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. Anyone else? All right. Anyone else? No, um, we're going to pray. And Courtney, is there a breakout room there? Uh, for those of you who want to come and, uh, and pray with us, and for those of you who want to receive Jesus Christ, remember you've already been reconciled. All you have to do now is to receive him. Lord, I thank you for reconciling me to your father. I thank you for forgiving my sins. I'm receiving that today. And I want to follow you all the way in baptism. Wash away my old past. Wash away all my sins. Father, in the name of Jesus, we were studying this evening forgiveness. It's a struggle, it's difficult, but it is possible. It has to be done to bring about deep healing. We're not talking about just physical healing, healing of the mind, the spirit, the body, the soul, the relationships, healing of our emotions, healing this evening. I wanna thank you, Lord, that as we receive your forgiveness in our heart, you will empower us and equip us uh, to forgive so that we can be free. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, 
what not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If the son therefore make you free, you are free indeed. And you have made us free. We just have to wake that up, Lord. Especially the hands that went up, Lord. I pray that your supernatural power will surge through this um, medium and will touch them in the innermost part of their soul. And they will experience liberation. They will experience freedom. Thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And those of you who want Amen. to, um, thank you, team, for coming. And the word of God is powerful. Jennifer, those who want to sign up with us, what can they do? You have uh, um, something there? It's posted. Posted in okay. the chat. Posted they can again. click on the link and fill it out and send it back to us. And we'll get in touch with you as soon as we receive it. Right. And somebody's asking for the morning program where Courtney has early morning help and Sabbath morning. It's the same link. Same link, beloved. Mm. I can share the Zoom platform again. I'll share it. Right. Well. Nothing between my soul and the Savior so that his blessed.